Canterbury, the ecclesiastical capital of England, is home to two universities, a significant amount of well-preserved medieval buildings, and the oldest continuously running school in the entire world. The Bell Harry Tower of Canterbury's UNESCO-designated cathedral, which is still the city's tallest feature, has dominated the city for hundreds of years. The top activities to do in Canterbury are heavily influenced by Canterbury's illustrious history and position at the epicenter of English literature. Despite being close by, Canterbury provides a suitable retreat from the city. This isn't a place that is merely captive to the past, despite the fact that evidence of its violent and religious history can be found everywhere. That is ensured by the fantastic cuisine and nightlife options. Discover some of South England's top cafes and lovely green areas by taking a stroll through the streets Chaucer mentions in his Canterbury Tales. Now, let's look at the top five things that you can do in Canterbury. Number five, Canterbury Cathedral. One of the oldest and most well-known Christian buildings in England is Canterbury Cathedral, located in Canterbury, Kent. This massive wooden entrance with exquisite work is seen as soon as you pass through the cathedral's imposing gates. The ceilings at the entrance are sufficiently eye-catching to be noticed. The cathedral's stunning Gothic design is also very beautiful. The Gothic vault is one of Canterbury Cathedral's most stunning features. It refers to the tertiary rib that spans between two other ribs and is used in architecture. Another intriguing feature of the cathedral is the enormous crypt beneath the east end. It has carved pillars and Romanesque murals. It is important to notice the stunning brickwork on the cathedral's outer walls. The most notable archbishops and significant monarchs and queens who had ties to the cathedral are well-crafted in the statues. The cathedral's original design was far more modest than the enormous building that is visible in the city today. The building was previously thought to be a renovated Roman temple, although this notion has not yet been proven. In 1993, when a team of archaeologists began their excavation, they discovered Anglo-Saxon building foundations rather than Roman ones. It had a nave and side chapels, but in the 9th and 10th centuries, a much larger building eventually took its place. At Canterbury, being an archbishop was a very risky position. Five archbishops have been cruelly murdered there throughout history, the first one being in 1012. After Danish raids began in 1011, Archbishop Ifea was assassinated in this year. During this time, this original cathedral suffered significant damage as well. The assassination of Archbishop Thomas Becket by Knights of Henry II is one of the most famous incidents in the cathedral's history. On December 29, 1170, a murder took place in the cathedral's northwest transept. Will no one rid me of this turbulent priest? The king allegedly said. Four of his most devoted knights took this phrase a little too seriously, and as a result, led the time towards a second murder. The Trinity Chapel was a brand new addition to the cathedral after this horrifying crime. The shrine of Thomas Becket was located here, which is why Canterbury became a well-liked pilgrimage destination in the years that followed. In the end, the sanctuary was demolished in 1538, and King Henry VII took possession of all the valuables. The location of the shrine is now marked with a candle. Visit Canterbury Cathedral to experience its breathtaking architecture and extensive history, which continues to draw tourists from around the globe. Number four, Beanie House of Art and Knowledge. The Beanie is a building for everyone. Whether you are a frequent user of the library, a teacher participating in a school's workshop, an adventurous traveler exploring the artifacts from the ancient lands, or a teenager taking part in family activities. This award-winning facility offers cutting-edge exhibition galleries, first-rate educational resources, and a diverse calendar of programs for people of all ages. 
The structure bears the name of its benefactor, Dr. James George Beanie, a humble man from Canterbury who studied medicine before immigrating to Australia and finding success there. Dr. Beanie donated money to the city of Canterbury in his will after passing away in 1891 so that it may be used to construct an institute for working men, with amenities for men from underprivileged backgrounds, like his own. The Beanie Institute, currently known as the Beanie House of Art and Knowledge, was built with the help of his patronage. It served as the new home for the Canterbury Royal Museum and Free Library. It is also home to the Victorian animal painter Thomas Sidney Cooper, one of Canterbury's most well-known artists. This collection, which includes all of Cooper's work, is significant on a national level. More than a thousand pieces are on display, and they are included in both the permanent galleries and the exceptional temporary exhibitions. Bringing art, heritage, books, ideas, information, and collections under one roof, this East Kent Cultural Center is acclaimed for its inviting atmosphere. Number 3. St. Martin's Church The oldest church to make the claim of being in continuous use in England is St. Martin's. When St. Augustine first arrived in Kent in AD 597, he built this church to convert the locals to Christianity. St. Martin's, Canterbury Cathedral, and St. Augustine's Abbey are all included in the Canterbury World Heritage Site. St. Martin's is not as well known to tourists as the other two ancient sites, which is a true shame because it is a beautiful old structure. Roman brick is utilized in the oldest portions of St. Martin's Church. However, it is unclear if these bricks were originally used in an early Roman building or were merely reused by Bertha, Augustine, and their successors. Although some of the brickwork in the chancel may be from the 7th century, other portions are almost certainly Roman. A round-headed doorway adjacent and a blocked doorway in the chancel's south wall are also works from the 7th century. There are blocked windows in the nave's west wall that are unquestionably Saxon, and the nave's buttressing suggests early Saxon construction. The perpendicular Gothic chancel arch stands out among all of this old architecture. Lepers who were prohibited from entering the church can see the high altar through a medieval squint built into the west wall. A little box of Cooper alloy is tucked into a nook in the nave's north wall. This is a reproduction of a chrismatory from the 14th century that was discovered in the southeast corner of the church nave in 1849. It is believed that the original chrismatory, which is currently on display in the crypt of Canterbury Cathedral, is the oldest chrismatory in England. Chrismatories were receptacles containing sacred oils used for anointing the sick, ordination, and baptism. It's been over 1,400 years now that Christians used this place as a place of worship. You must visit this church and see for yourself this archaic worship place. Number 2. Westgate and Westgate Gardens The Westgate, Canterbury's largest and possibly finest remaining medieval entrance, was constructed during the Hundred Years' War to protect Canterbury from invasion. Additionally, it represented the richness and stature of the city and the archbishop, whose palace was located here. As opposed to how it is today, the 60-foot, 18-meter, high bastion was approached across a drawbridge over the River Stour and surrounded by formidable walls on all sides. The 18-meter West Gate, a powerful 14th-century building, is the final of seven medieval city gates defending Canterbury. The gate contains a drawbridge that is still guarded by a portcullis, wooden doors, and is made of Kentish ragstone and a durable blue-gray limestone. Some of the oldest gun loops in the UK may be seen in the stonework of the two drum towers that flank the doorway. There are also machiculations beneath the battlements that connect the towers. The gate houses a museum displaying the painted plaster models used to create the bronze sculptures that adorn Westminster Palace and the Lord's Chamber. They stand in for the two bishops, 16 barons, and other signatories to the Magna Carta in 1215. This medieval garden on the banks of the Stow, as it flows toward the West Gate, is one of Canterbury's most tranquil locations. 
This area is among the oldest gardens in the nation and has been occupied since the Middle Ages. The garden's formal flower beds feature the historic London Road Gate and a section of Canterbury's Roman Wall. A stunning Norman Ark was brought here from the ruins of St. Augustine's Abbey during the Victorian era. The Lord Mayor's offices are presently located in the Tudor Revival-style Victorian Tower House. Enjoy the riverfront strolls from the historic Westgate Towers in Canterbury, which are situated at the end of the busy High Street. Walk start in the lovely formal gardens and take you past picnic areas, a kid's play area with a Roman theme, water meadows, and a nearby nature reserve. Number 1. Crooked House St. John Boy's House It appears as though the Crooked House, also known as Sir John Boy's House, King's Gallery, or Old King's Shop, is going to topple over. Many visitors are stopped in their tracks by its lopsided appearance. The Crooked House, which was built in the 17th century, has a peculiar aspect that has inspired several tales. Some say that it served as the model for a section of Dickens' David Copperfield. Others have claimed that it was Sir John Boy's residence, the MP and recorder of Canterbury, although this claim has been disproven. However, the house frequently bears his name. Near Canterbury's downtown and within earshot of the cathedral bells, the Crooked House is positioned at the end of Palace Street. The asymmetrical aspect of the home was caused by an internal chimney slip. Although it is currently supported by a steel frame, the site gives the structure a disorienting quality. It constantly changes ownership. Recently, it has served as a gallery, a bookstore, a school supply store, and an instrument store. The extremely misaligned door has frequently changed colors, but it has never stopped being off-center. Just a little ways off the main drag, the Crooked House is a charming find that is worth exploring. Today, it serves as the location of Catching Lives Bookshop, which sells used books to raise money for the underprivileged and homeless. If odd angles have you a little worried, don't be. The building is well-supported. It's secure and solid despite appearances. Since the murder of Archbishop Thomas Becket in 1170, Canterbury has been a significant pilgrimage destination in Europe. It is now regarded as one of England's most picturesque and ancient cities, and that is the reason that we chose to take you on a little knowledgeable journey of this beautiful destination. Are you bringing a copy of the Tales of Canterbury with you when you visit this city? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, where to next?